Hi guys, welcome back to another video. I wanted to start a series on things to consider before you go ahead and buy an animal. And I wanted to start the series off with my beer dragon Chandler because beer dragons are perceived as the easier animal or a beginner animal to own, which I don't really agree with for a few different reasons that I'll talk through in today's video. And I just thought it'd be a good way to share the things that I've learned along the way and let you uh, think about this before you go ahead and buy one. Because when you get a pet, you are responsible for them for the rest of their life. Um, and a lot of people don't really think that through when they get animals, they don't know how long they live for, um, and they think it was a good idea at the time, and then down the track they realize it's not a great idea, or circumstances have changed and things like that. I understand things do come up and you can't always predict what's gonna happen in the future, but when you do get an animal, you should be aiming to have them for the rest of their life and making sure that they live a happy and healthy one at that. So let's get into it. I just want to talk about the top six things I could think of that you should really consider before you get a beer dragon. And hopefully this will help prepare you if you do go ahead and go down this path. Um, or it might change your mind and you might decide that they're not the right pet for you and there's something else that's out there that might be better suited for your lifestyle. So I hope you enjoy this video. If you do, please like and subscribe. And let's get straight to it. The number one on the list, which is a common theme for most animals, is their expenses. So with a beer dragon, they do have a few expenses involved. People uh, sometimes tell you, or pet shops will tell you that they're cheap and easy, but that's not really the case. If you're doing it properly, it shouldn't be cheap. Um, I'm not saying it's really expensive because it's not, but there is a bit of an investment, especially at the start. When I refer to their expenses, I'm talking about things like food, uh, the setup, so their enclosure, lighting, which also includes their setup, maintenance of the enclosure, and then you also have the vet. So every animal should see a vet at least annually to have a checkup. Um, and with beard dragons or reptiles, you need to find a vet that is spe that specializes in reptiles or beard dragons. And sometimes that can be hard to find. For instance, I have to drive 45 minutes to an hour to take Chandler to the vet because we don't have one locally that can look at beard dragons, but I'm prepared to do that and happy to do that for him. So if this is something that you're not prepared to do or you don't have a vet that's nearby um, who can look at beard dragons or the reptile that you have, that's something you really need to consider because things unfortunately do happen and you want somewhere close by or somewhere you can get to easily so you can make sure that your animal is healthy and has the best care possible. With their food, beard dragons need daily salads and it's a variety of different things in that salad. So a lot of herbs, parsley, basil, all of that. Um, carrot, pumpkin, you can go online and research this. There's a lot of things they can and there's a lot of things they can't eat. And I highly recommend you look into that thoroughly before you go ahead and start feeding them because you don't want to give them the wrong thing and then it mucks up their diet and they don't digest things properly. So daily salads and then they also have insects. And I think you should always feed a beer dragon or any reptile live insects. So that there is probably a big factor people don't really consider um, is that you're going to have live insects in your house. If you don't like insects, definitely not the good idea to get a beer dragon or any reptile that needs them. Um, it can be a bit gross, I'm not going to lie. I feed Chandler uh, cockroaches and crickets and I keep them under his enclosure and sometimes they can escape. I've now figured out a way to keep them from doing that, but at the start it was a bit touch and go there. Um, it's not, yeah, if you don't like insects, this is probably not the best choice for you. With their lighting um, and their setup, his enclosure is a four foot tank. Um, pet shops will sell you smaller tanks and they'll give you that for when the beer dragon is small. And I get that, it's small, it doesn't need a big space but the reptile is gonna grow, um, it's inevitable. So why not just get the bite size tank from the start and then you don't have to keep spending money on upgrading the size of the tank. It's also relating to their lights. If you have a small tank, you're gonna be buying smaller tubes for the UV and the heat lamp, which is fair enough. But when you upgrade your tank, you're gonna to have to upgrade your lighting setup too. And that's just another, another cost that just keeps getting added on and then it starts to get expensive. So whilst it might be expensive from the start to get them a four foot tank and the right lighting that goes inside of that, it's gonna save you a lot of money in the long run and then your beer dragon is gonna be happy and healthy and you won't have to keep changing things. The setup of the enclosure is a big expense from the start. I would say that you'd be spending anywhere from 500 upwards to set up a decent enclosure and have the right lighting in that enclosure. Um, and then once you've got it set up, then you're pretty much good to go for the rest of their life. 
the lights there, so like I mentioned before, they need a UV tube and a heat lamp. Um, they can be a bit expensive, especially the UV tubes. They're probably $80, $90 each, depending where you're getting them from. And you have to replace that UV tube every year. So if you don't replace it, then you're not getting enough UV um, and it will cause some dietary issues. They won't be digesting food properly and they might have bone density issues. Lots of things can come out of it. So you really, really need to make sure they have proper lighting and a proper diet. They are probably the most two important things when you get a beer dragon. The last expense I wanted to mention was wildlife basic license fee. You have to have a wildlife basic license to own a beer dragon and this fee is due every year so you have to renew it annually um, and without it like I said you can't own a beer dragon. So moving on to the second thing to consider before getting a beer dragon and that's time. Beer dragons, like a lot of other animals out there, take up a lot of your time. Some people might think, oh, you can just put them in the enclosure and that's it really. They're just there, they live in there, you don't really do much. That's not true. When I got Chandler, he was only this big and I spent every day at least an hour sitting with him or letting him crawl across me, whatever it was to try and bond with him because he was very skittish. And it was about a year later that he finally started to open up a bit more and he was trusting me a lot more and we started to connect. I know that sounds really weird, but we did and he's really trusting of me. I can just hold him for hours now. I take him to work sometimes. He's just amazing, but it took a lot of time and effort to get to this. It's not just the bonding with them. You've got to consider cleaning their tank. I have to do daily spot checks of his tank, which means I clean up after every mess he makes because he goes to the toilet daily. And then you have to do weekly deep cleans. So that's taking everything out of the tank, cleaning it thoroughly, and then putting back in. That can take me up to an hour, depending on how messy his tank is. At the moment, you can see that he is starting to shed and he'll create a lot more mess because of that. Um, and he'll just have shedded bits of skin or scales all over the enclosure and I have to continually pick it out so he doesn't eat it um, and it's just good to keep the enclosure clean. So another thing that takes a lot of time is feeding. So making his salad every morning, that takes a bit of time out of your day, making sure that it's fresh and it has everything in there. Beard dragons, they have to bask for two hours, so they have to sit under their heat lamp for two hours before they eat anything, otherwise they won't digest it properly. And they also have to bask after they eat so they digest things properly. So it's just putting that into consideration with your feeding schedule. I am lucky that I work from home most days and I can put his salad out around 9, 30, 10 o'clock, depending on how long he's fast for. Um, and days that I have to go into work, I'll prepare his salad and then I'll zip home and put it in his enclosure. So you just really need to make sure you have the time to do that. Again, we're feeding him insects. It's not good to leave insects in the enclosure because crickets especially can bite your beard dragon um, and irritate them at nighttime if they escape. So if you leave crickets in there and he doesn't get them all, they can come out at night and bite your beard dragon and it's just not good. So with insects, I do it with tongs and I just find that a lot easier. I know exactly how many he's eating because he is on a bit of a diet at the moment. He's a bit chubby um, and then I know exactly how much he's eating and I can make sure that they don't go off into his enclosure and we have an issue down the track. Some other things that take a bit of time is bathing him. I give him a bath every fortnight or when he is dirty and that's just putting in some lukewarm water and just letting him sit. It also helps with shedding. So right now I'm misting him with a spray bottle and he baths under his heat lamp and then it will just make it a bit less irritable. It's like for them having a big sunburn constantly. Um, He's trying to climb on my head again. <laughs> Another thing that takes up a bit of time is training. Um, some people like to train their beer dragons. I guess this is related to bonding. You just want to spend lots of time with them. I like to get Chandler out of his enclosure for at least an hour every day. And then he can roam around the house and he gets his exercise. He gets a change of scenery um, and he gets to explore. It's just really good for them. It's also good to sit outside with them in the sun and they can get proper UV or natural UV. Um, when you do do that, make sure that you're with them the whole time. I have a little harness that I put on Chandler so he can't run away. Um, and you can also get enclosures, but don't leave them out there alone. It can be quite scary um, and birds will also prey on them. So you want to make sure you're watching your beer dragon whenever you take them outside. The third thing to consider, which I've kind of touched based on already, but I want to make it its own point because it's really important, is cleaning. Cleaning not only takes a lot of time, but you need to make sure you do it properly. If you're not keeping their enclosure clean, that can cause a lot of issues down the track. 
Um, they can get really sick and it's just not healthy. So if you're not committed to cleaning their enclosure and doing daily spot cleans and then doing weekly deep cleans, it's not a good idea to go get a beard dragon. Chandler, what are you? <laughs> the fourth thing to consider when getting a beard dragon and a really big one at that is their lifespan. Beard dragons can live for 10 to 15 years, maybe longer, depending on what their lifestyle's been like, how healthy they are. But yeah, they can live for 10 to 15 years. So you need to consider that when you purchase one. Are you going to be able to care for them for that entire time? Are you gonna be responsible for them and make sure that they have a happy, healthy life? You just gotta make sure you're committed to that from the start, because there are a lot of animals out there that unfortunately are up for sale or are looking to get rehomed because people didn't really think about that, and now they've got nowhere to go, or people like to buy them for their children and they're great pets for kids, but then when their kids move out or something happens, they don't know what to do with them, they're left with their pet, um, and they try and get rid of them or rehome them. Some people even just release them back in the wild, and that is so wrong. Um, when you raise something like a beard dragon in captivity, they're not going to know the natural things like the instincts of hunting and things like that. They're ju it's just not a good idea. You shouldn't do that. Just consider that when you're buying a pet, how long is it going to live for? Franklin, my turtle, he can live for up to 30 years, sometimes longer. Um, he's 10 years because I adopted him, but I am committed to being there for that entire time. And if something, God forbid, happens to me, my husband is willing to take care of my animals too. So you really need to think this through before you go ahead and add another family member or one of these pets. The fifth thing to consider is travel. Personally, I don't go away too often, and when I do, I'm very fortunate to have my best friend who is willing to come and house sit for me and feed and look after all my animals. Not many people will have that. You might not even have someone who is comfortable with feeding a beard dragon. Um, not many people would have a friend who's willing to get some tongs and pick out crickets or woodies. Can you not eat my hair, please? <laughs> and pick out crickets and woodies to feed their reptiles. So you need to really consider that. Um, are you willing to not travel as often? Do you have someone who can come over and feed your animals? Do you have someone who can check in on them every day and make sure that they're healthy? They need their salad every day. They need their insects. So travel, if you like to travel lots, then getting a reptile such as a beer dragon or a lot of other reptiles actually, is probably not a great idea because you need to make sure that someone is there checking in on them and you might not find someone who is comfortable with doing that. They also need to be handled frequently. So if you don't have someone who's comfortable with taking the animals out of their enclosure, they're just gonna sit in there, get bored, they can get sick because the enclosures aren't getting cleaned properly. Like, I don't know if people know this and I forgot to mention this in the cleaning aspect, but their poo stinks. You need a hazmat suit to clean the poo that they produce. It's crazy. So just make sure you consider that if you do want to go away, you have someone who's willing to come in, check in and look after your animals for you. The last thing to consider and one of the most important things before getting any pet is research. You need to be doing a lot of research and committed to it as well. Not just searching on Google quickly going, okay, this source says this and that's great. You need to cross-reference things. You need to get different information from different areas and make sure you get all the information you can to make the best decisions about how you're gonna approach this, how you're gonna care for them. I'm still doing research to this day on the animals I have so I can improve how I keep them and give them a better lifestyle. And there's just so much information out there, it can get a bit overwhelming. I would recommend joining Facebook groups. I've got an Australian Beard Dragon one that I'm on. There's plenty out there. And people in there are happy to help and give you a bit of advice and information. So if you do want to do this, go join some of those groups first. Uh, have that conversation. Make sure that you are prepared and ready to take on this responsibility. Um, and then go research it on Google and stuff as well. Just make sure you're looking into everything you can and thinking of everything before you go ahead and do this. Because again, you're not just getting them for now, you're committing to having them for the rest of your life or for their life. Um, and if they're gonna live a long life, you wanna make sure that they're happy and healthy. So that brings me to the end of this video. I hope this has helped you make a decision on whether you want to get a beard dragon or not. I don't wanna scare anyone away because I think they are amazing pets. Chandler is just so awesome. I love him so much. I love that I can just take him to work and I can show people and educate them on how special these animals are. But if you're not prepared to do all the things I've just talked about, and that's not everything either, they're just the most important ones I could think of, then I don't think this is the right decision right now and you should probably look at a different pet or maybe just wait in a while until you are in a position where you can meet those commitments and make sure that you are doing everything you can to give them a happy and healthy life. 
I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.